So let me do this question. Uh, th this is the first of the two questions that I want to do in a set because they both involve kind of a classic setup of inclined plane and they are slightly different. They are related to each other. So let me do this version first and then we'll look at the next one. So before I even read the question, I know I'm going to using these set of steps uh, in this problem solving. Uh, we call them standard strategy. And this is the set of steps in a systematic problem solving strategy that I recommend that you go through uh, for any question that involves the forces and you have to do force analysis to solve. So the first step is you draw your free body diagram. I've said many times how this is the step that will take most of your effort, creativity, time, care, everything. And once you've done that, then the rest of the steps two, three, and four are kind of mechanical. Step number two, you define coordinate axis. Um, and here we will end up defining kind of inclined axis in order to deal with the acceleration along the incline. Um, and we break forces into components. And we will be doing that for this question because I see components happening. And then once we have that, then we should be in a good good place to write the Newton's second law equation saying acceleration is equal to net force divided by mass. And once you finish through step number four, you should be at a place where um, you are have a good idea what to do to wrap up the remainder of the question. So let's do, um, uh, let me first read the question before I start drawing free body diagram. So it asks, what force? Okay, so we're gonna be looking for this. Must be applied to uh, some mass of crate. We are given the mass on a frictionless plane. Okay, that's good. Don't have to worry about friction. By the way, that M is not reading well for me. Let me here. Incline that uh, some angle theta to cause an acceleration of, oh, we are given the acceleration. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Um, acceleration which way? <laughs> um, so, I mean, you know, it could be acceleration this way. It could be acceleration this way. Um, let me go with this assumption that they're talking about acceleration up the incline. And then uh, if somehow the answer turns out to be wrong, then we'll go back adjust our assumption and then <laughs> do it that way. But I think upward is the one that's intended, but I think question wording is a little unclear. <laughs> okay, I think I understand enough, the, enough of the question to now tackle it. So I'm gonna draw a free body diagram. Um, so I'm drawing the free body diagram of the one object that we have in the system that uh, we care about. So, um, so we have to draw the forces on it and um, it, as I draw the forces, I constantly ask myself this question, did I draw all the forces? So let's just start out with the two easy places. One is any force that they tell us is there. They are telling us there's an applied force along the incline. All right, so I know that force is there. Okay. And that one, <laughs> any force that they tell us is there. Two, um, gravity is almost always gonna be there. So I like to start out with the gravity. And having drawn gravity will give you some idea of what else there needs to be in order for acceleration to come out the right direction. So with the forces we have done so far, acceleration could come out maybe something like this. And, that's not correct direction. You know, it has to be along the incline, either up or down. Um, so what we need is we need a normal force from this uh, surface of contact, in order for uh, in order for any net force in the direction perpendicular to the surface to add up to zero, so that the acceleration can be parallel to the surface. So I need a normal force in that direction. And I ask myself this question, did I draw all the forces? And I know I didn't forget friction because they said the frictionless, no friction. And with all the forces I've drawn, I can see that I can make this magnitudes work in such a way that 
um, the only net force will be in direction along the incline. So, uh, you know, this is the direction along the incline. And I think I can make that happen. So, so we are good. Um, uh, I think this is all the forces we need. Once you have that, then um, that's step number two. You need to define coordinate axis. So I think uh, they want to look for the crate sliding upward. So let me define my axis that's consistent with that assumption. I'm going to have plus axis going in that direction of anticipated acceleration and the y axis pointed that way. Once I have my axis, then I can identify components. My applied force and normal force are fine. They are along x and y directions. I need, don't need to break them down. Gravity, I need to break them down. I need to break it into component along the x-axis and component along the y-axis. And once you've identified this, then the kind of the step that's uh, important is looking at this right triangle and correctly labeling the angle that you have. Uh, it takes some practice going through a bunch of stuff. I'll leave the practice for you if you need it. When you are done, you are going to say, this is your angle theta. So armed with that information, you can even write down uh, what the expression for these two components are. Expression for this component should be uh, mem g, the hypotenuse times the, this is the opposite side to the angle, so it should be sine theta, and it's the x component. That's why I keep cautioning, you know, don't automatically say sine y cosine x, not always. This side should be mg, again the hypotenuse, and it's adjacent side to the angle, so it should be cosine theta. So those are my components. I've broken down forces into components. That's my step number three. Once you've done that, then um, you should be in good place to just to copy down the information that's in this diagram into Newton's second law equation. So let me do that. Um, um, I, so I'm going to need two equations, you know, one object, one equation for each direction. I have x and y. So let me just plan for writing down equation for x and y directions. So in the x direction, I have my acceleration, again, positive, up the slope, and that's what I'm assuming. That's equal to any upward forces or any forces that are along the incline in the upward issue direction, I give them positive signs. So plus F minus the opposite direction force, mg sine theta. That's the component of gravity along the incline that's preventing it from going up. All of that divided by mass is equal to acceleration. Y component, um, don't know if we need it. Let's uh, write it down and see. So zero acceleration, that's how we define our axis. And the forces are the normal force minus the mg cosine theta. And minus mg cosine theta and divide by n to be perfectly correct. Although you could uh, imagine multiplying both sides by n to cancel this out. So I'm looking at these equations. Let's see, our unknowns are um, A is given, F, okay, F is an unknown, M is given, G sine theta given, normal force is unknown. Okay, so we have two equations and two unknowns. But one thing I'm noticing is if I'm looking at this equation, by itself, um, it has that one unknown force of magnitude that we are looking for, and, uh, and no other unknown. So I think I can just solve that for f. The only thing that the second equation might have given us is the normal force, but I don't want it. I don't need it. Nothing interesting happens in that direction. There's no friction, so I can just uh, not worry about it. So let me solve this for, um, for the apply the force f. So apply the force to F. Uh, I'm just going to do the algebra in my head. Uh, my apologies. Uh, pause the video and just <laughs> make sure you can do the algebra yourself as well. It's going to be mass times acceleration plus mg sine theta. Oh, I guess I might have guessed that. All right. I guess I can just plug in the numbers. Uh, uh, before I plug in the numbers, let me just simplify it a little bit. Factoring out mass n acceleration, the number that we are given, plus g sine theta. 
So I can just plug in the numbers here. Uh, let me use the Sage method as a calculator. Uh, it's a little bit overpowered the calculator, but fine. <laughs> um, so mass is 85 kilograms um, and acceleration 3 meter per second squared plus a g 9.8 meter per second squared times the sine of and uh, Sage method only accepts angles in uh, radians, not degree. So I have to convert 30 degrees to radians by multiplying it by pi divided by 180. Um, and uh, I, I think I'm going to get an answer that I'll want to convert. Oh, never mind. They actually did that. Never mind. So uh, 671.5 Newton. OK, uh, let's plug that in and see. 670. I can round it to 672. 72. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I think we have enough time for the next related question. So let me go ahead and do that. Uh, it's this question. Let me do it this way. I want to kind of try to avoid drawing unnecessary figures. <laughs> so let me kind of have it in this view. So this is the next question that's related because it's basically using a exact the same setup. It says it's a, a perfectly smooth ramp that makes an angle with the horizontal. So it's another inclined plane question. Some of the details of the question is a little different, you know, whether there's applied force or not. Uh, <laughs> but the upside is if I get rid of all these drawings, then I can just uh, use this uh, figure um, while just to, um, um, uh, relabeling some of the angle stuff that changes for the next question. So let me just, uh, uh, yeah, use that uh, figure. And I also can just reuse my uh, standard strategy steps that I don't have to write down again because they are already written. So, okay, let me just uh, relabel this. So this is going to be 45 degree, and I'll still say that's my theta. Um, and uh, let me cross this out so that I don't confuse myself. The setup we have is 2.8. OK, so I still have block of some mass. We are given the mass on some perfectly smooth ramp, makes an angle. And it says, so what is the block's acceleration down the ramp and the force? Oh, I think it is a typo. And the force of the ramp on the block. Um, so force of the ramp on the block. OK, so I think for that situation, we are just considering where there's no apply the force. So uh, so let's draw a free body diagram to help us make sense of the question. So this is still the same standard strategy. Draw free body diagram, define axis, break forces into components, and then finally write down Newton's second law equation. So my free body diagram will say, I have a block of mass m. Uh, no apply the first this time. So I'm just going to start out with the gravity, mg. OK, if I believed that there's only gravity, it might be accelerating downward. But I don't believe that. It should be accelerating down the ramp. So there must be force from the ramp along this point of contact. So, oh, so there should be no more force there that's uh, perpendicular to the the incline of the ramp. And once you have those two forces, then you can imagine getting their magnitudes right so that acceleration is down the incline. OK. Oh, so once you've drawn the free body diagram, then you can see, oh, so this normal force, that is the force of the ramp on the block. So, um, so they, what they're asking, you know, what is the the force of the ramp on the block, they're asking for the normal force. They could have just said the normal force. I don't know why they did that. <laughs> so, so, OK, we drew, for, drew free body diagram. Let's see what else. Yeah, so th those are the two parts. Uh, so uh, you should always double check that you've drawn all the forces. When it's a single object, it tends to be easier because you don't have to worry about the Newton's third law. Uh -huh. So drew free body diagram. Let's define axis. So here it's going to be accelerating downward. So I want to define my axis so that that is my positive x direction. Uh, you know, leftward being positive, sometimes that looks a little weird, but hopefully you can use that. Uh, that is uh, um, 
that leads to fewer mistakes than defining upward as positive and trying to deal with the double negatives and all that. Let's break down forces into components. The normal force is fine. It's already along the y direction. Uh, gravity, I'm going to need to break it into components. So there's a component along x and component along y. And you kind of have to figure out the, your angle situation. So this is the theta angle of the incline you are given. And when you go through geometry, track it through all the angles to try to figure out which of these angles in the triangle is theta. It should be this one. I think I've done the demonstration of there. So go take a look at that. So this side should be mg sine theta. Hey, I think I've seen that before. But don't get too comfortable, though. There are situations where horizontal component is cosine theta. So you don't ever want that to be automatic thing. Just to draw the triangle, go through geometry, identify the angle correctly, and do that. So OK, we're done with the step number three. We broke forces into components. And uh, let's do step number four. So. We need two equations. Uh, we need the equation for along the x direction and along the y direction. Along the x direction, we have acceleration is equal to the net force. Oh, I guess only one force is uh, along x. So that's going to be mg sine theta divided by m is acceleration. Oh, so m's cancel out and you get acceleration is g sine theta. I think you've seen that formula elsewhere. Sometimes there are times when I've just given you the formula for some kinematic stuff. Okay, uh, I have a feeling we're not gonna be, oh wait, so we do need acceleration, so we'll be using that here. Uh, okay, y direction. Uh, I'm still doing step number four, sorry. Got side the track. Equation along the, um, the Newton's second law equation along the y direction would be zero for zero acceleration along the y direction is equal to, I need these two forces, normal force and the y component of gravity. Normal force minus mg um, cosine theta. And the whole thing divided by m uh, for correcting it. But you can imagine multiplying both sides by m that cancels this out. So you have n minus mg cosine theta is equal to zero. Oh, I can solve that for uh, normal force. So normal force is equal to mg cosine theta. Oh, I think that's uh, those two um, um, numbers that they're looking for. So, OK, I can do that. Uh, let me just uh, write down the expression here for when I'm plugging in numbers. mg sine theta and mg cosine theta. There's one more part, part B. Uh, ah, what force applied upward along and parallel to the ramp would allow the block to move with a constant velocity? Uh, oh, sorry, one second. That's not MG. That's just G sine theta. That's an interesting question. Um, you could do it a full-blown way, you know, go back this far. And, okay, I have now upward applied the force, and let's see. Um, you can do that, and uh, I think that could be a good practice. But I'm going to take a little bit of a shortcut, mainly because I see that I'm out of time. <laughs> uh, shortcut is I'm going to, I'm reading here, uh, a lot of block to move with constant velocity. That's a code word for saying your acceleration is equal to zero. So the block is still moving, but if uh, velocity isn't changing, then acceleration, rate of change of velocity is zero. So what it means is when I do go through these steps again and do all that, what the change will amount to being is that acceleration will be zero. So if acceleration is going to be zero, I want the net force to be zero. Here's this one part of the force that won't change because that's gravity. Gravity doesn't change. So I'm thinking about one other force I'm combining with that that'll make the whole thing go to zero. And you know, if it's a force in an opposite direction from this component of gravity, then it must be equally magnitude. So this force is going to be equally magnitude to this component of gravity. So it will be mg uh, sine theta. That's the amount of force along the ramp 
that'll make a net force equal to zero. So, so the answer is actually quite simple. Um, it's uh, questions like this where I uh, tell people, make sure you know how to drive it from scratch. Because if you somehow got the formulas from somewhere, then yeah, formulas are simple, but yeah, the thing to learn is how to drive these yourself. So let's do that. Um, so G 9.8 times um, sine theta. So that's a 45 degrees uh, times converted radians pi over 180. And I get a sense that this is going to, yeah, the square root, I don't like that. So I'm going to put it through. Uh, N is a function that does a numerical um, decimal approximation. So that's the 6.93 meter per second squared. That's my acceleration. Let me do the rest of the numbers. So I'm going to put this through N from the start. Mass of 2.8 kilogram times 9.8 times cosine of 45 times 0.90. Okay, that's my, that's the normal force on the block. And finally, the, um, the applied force that you would need is n times 2.8, 9.8 times sine of 45. Oh, that's going to be the <laughs> sine and cosine. They have no distinction here. It, it's fine. Uh, is that right? Yeah, I guess that's right. OK, yeah. So 6.93 and then 19.4 for both of them. 6.93 and 19.4 for both of them, not because they're related, but because it's 45 degrees. That's really, <laughs> these two answers can be different if it's not 45 degrees. 